everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel and this is your tip of the week. This is a pattern I bought, oh, a few years ago. It's New Look, pattern number 6273. And I'm going to be focusing on the jacket and how the neckline is done. Before you purchase a pattern, you always want to look at the very back of the pattern envelope. It has all the sizing information, how much fabric you need, and the recommended supplies that you need to purchase. Inside of the envelope are your pattern pieces and your instruction sheet. So before you start looking at all the pattern pieces, you need to read the instruction sheet, especially if you are a beginner. Now I'm only going to go over a few things on this instruction sheet, but I have a detailed tutorial on how to read a pattern. It's like learning a foreign language, so it's really important you understand the terms. When you get your pattern, you need to read this area up here. It explains the special terms that are used and the definition of the terms. And then it has little diagrams up here on how that little term is used. Also, if you're new to sewing clothing or you've never bought a pattern before, you also need to pay very close attention to the layout of your pattern pieces when you're getting ready to cut it. You need to look for the width of the fabric you're using so that you lay your pattern pieces out correctly. I'm going to be talking about the jacket and the back neckline area and how it is done. And there's three terms in this pattern you may not be familiar with. And that is layering, stay stitch, and under stitch. Now this is a small version of the pattern piece for the back, but I uh, wanted to show you this is basically what it's going to look like, just larger. So this is the neckline, your shoulder sections, and your armholes. I'm going to focus on the neckline. Now I have a line of stitching there that's only an eighth of an inch away on the neckline. This is called stay stitching. And the reason why you stay stitch your fabric on a curved edge, especially in clothing, is it stabilizes the fabric so that it doesn't stretch. So even on fabric that is very stretchable, if your pattern instructions call for stay stitching, it's, they it's because they want to reduce the amount of stretch and on the neckline area while you're sewing it together. I had already done 1 8 inch wide and then when I was reading the definition, their version of the definition of stay stitch, they wanted you to do a half inch wide. I'd never been taught that before. I looked at many websites that all said 1 8 so there must be a special reason it could be the type of fabric they're asking you to use. If you're new, when in doubt, do exactly what the pattern says. Now I lengthen my stitch a little bit and always make sure you press your stay stitching flat. You want to relax that thread so that your fabric is very flat. This is the facing piece that will go on that back neckline. On the back of your facing piece, ignore my markings right now, you want to put your fusible interfacing on. It helps to uh, stabilize that neckline, keeping everything nice and flat so that it's comfortable to wear. So you also want to finish off your edge. Now in the pattern instructions, they wanted you to uh, fold the edges under and stitch it down. I like using my serger to finish the edges off. If you're someone who really likes to do sew clothing or you're hoping to get into making clothing more, I highly recommend you save your money and also buy 
a serger sewing machine because it does a beautiful job on finishing the raw edges of your fabric. Now you're going to put your fusible interfacing on the backside or underside of the fabric. Just follow package instructions for putting it on. So this is the front side of my, my facing. This is the front side of the fabric for the back. So I'm going to bring those two front sides or pretty sides, they're also called right sides. Bring them together and you're going to pin all your pieces together. Now the pattern piece calls for you to go in 5 eighths of an inch from the shoulder seam area. You go in 5 eighths of an inch and 5 eighths of an inch from the raw edge up here. And you're going to stitch all the way around and stop 5 eighths of an inch from the shoulder edge again. So then the next step after that is they ask you to do layering. And what layering means is this facing piece, you're actually going to cut it down to where it's shorter. And you do that to, re to take away some of the bulk so that that neckline stays really nice and flat and comfortable. After doing the layering, then you want to take scissors and do slits going up to the stitch line, but make sure you don't uh, cut through the stitch line. Now they show cutting little wedges like this out, and that's perfectly fine. I have a lot of problems cutting with scissors, so I just do a slit. It just is easier for me, so you can do it either way. The next term that they use, and it's the next step after this, is called under stitching. And what that means is you're going to take the facing piece and you're going to fold it towards the seam area right here. You fold it over and then you do this next step at your sewing machine. You're going to stitch on the facing close to that seam area. Here is the stitch line. It's on the facing. You don't want to do it right on top of that seam but on the facing side. And this is what it looks like on the underside. Now when you fold that facing underneath your fabric that's on the outside, it's not going to slip out as you're wearing the garment. I'm going to turn it over. And so this is what it looks like when you turn it over. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tip of the week and I hope this information was helpful to you. Remember, review that tutorial that explains the a different pattern terms. It'll be very helpful to you. Even if you uh, do know how to sew, I would review it because maybe if you haven't sewn in a while, you've forgotten a lot of those things. So make sure you go down below your YouTube screen to the description section to look for that link. And again, it's called how to read a pattern. I'll also have a link to my playlist of all of my sewing tips. I have over 130 sewing tip tutorials. They're very informative for those of you who are beginners especially, and for those of you who haven't maybe sewn in a while, it's a nice refresher. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Make sure you go and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.